Today you're going to follow along with me as I start a pastel painting from the beginning drawing through ideas of composition, light, shadow, and shapes, and blending colors all the way to the end of the painting. Stay with me, and this is Pastel Painting with Kelly Borsheim. Let's get to it. One of the things that I want to do in my artistic life is to expand my horizons and get to where, um, in, for things I'm not comfortable in. And one of them has always been color. Uh, I started off in the black and white photography lab, and, and that's what changed the course of my life from being a mathematician and to going towards the magic of the art. Um, so I always really have a sensual feeling experience with the black and white or monochrome, sepia, that kind of stuff. And I really, really love it, and I've never really felt comfortable looking, um, uh, creating with color. I love color but I don't feel like that's where my talent lies. But every once in a while I like to revisit that stuff because I have this idea that I don't want to be limited by something that might be a fear and that I have a response, an emotional response to color and therefore I shouldn't feel that it's not important to me, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and then other times, of course, I revert back and I go to sculpture because it's monochromatic, but it's mostly its touch. It's I find that touch is what appeals to me most. However, let's get beyond all that stuff. Today I want to focus on color and I'm working in pastels. I took a course with Casey Klon uh, back in November, October last year when the, uh, the COVID virus was keeping us all at home anyway. And he's a wonderful artist. He's brilliant with color. Um, he sees color in a way that I'm not sure I'll ever be able to see, but I appreciate most of his drawings and compositions. So anyway, I'm using a photograph that I took here of a lavender bush that's um, out here in Tuscany. And I just really, really like the light backlit, and that's something that I've always liked. Black and white or color doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is, I now, I'm taking this photo and I want to use it to make a color study uh, of pushing this, this kind of palette thing going on. So I was going to show you that, first of all, this is not just a photograph. A photograph, as you know from plein air painters possibly, or just knowing in general, a photograph tends to be more contrasty. It, the camera cannot see the tones that our eye see, and also it tends to group things similar um, in tone in a way that's different from how we perceive nature in life. That's why so many plein air painters insist that they don't use photographs. However, um, I want to use uh, this is a printout of a photograph, which is even worse because it's really the darks are really grouped together. There's very little detail there, though I'll bet in my original photo there was. For me, I'm not that interested in it because I also know that one of the things I really, really enjoy is contrast. Um, I do enjoy a really softly modeled piece that's very low contrast, but it doesn't get my attention from a distance the way other stuff does, and I just tend to be high contrast. Okay, so enough with the talking. What I had done from Casey's class was learn to um, choose my palette before I start. So I wanted to show you what I did here with this. Is I went to, let's see if that's showing my, my colors there. So these are the colors I chose. I'm looking at the photograph and I chose obviously greens, but I felt there weren't enough greens here. So I went into my favorite unison pastel set, which is the dark set. And there are cold greens, there are warm greens, and basically there are dark greens because I find it difficult to get dark in pastel. And maybe that's not the point of pastel, but I want I want my classical options as usual. All right, so I have my greens. I've got a cold green here. I've got warm greens. I've got a cold green. There's a, a mid-tone. There's a light tone. Um, and then I pick the purples because you can see here I've got lavender. There's purple up in here. And then also I picked some yellows for this part where the transition happens between the sunlight hitting the lavender plants and the shadow of the lavender plants. So I have here, again, I have some uh, a high high chroma or high intensity as as um, Casey uh, says, high intensity yellow, and then I have these yellows with whites. One is a cold and one is a warm. And I want to thank Lisa O'Neill for giving me these pastels. This the box is tremendous and um, probably a lifelong supply the way I work so slowly. 
I picked a more pale yellow, then I picked a warm white and a cold white because I'm working here on this sanded paper from I Think You Art and um, it's not white. And I know that when I come here to the high contrast, the whole subject of the painting, I'm going to want some lighter colors than what this is, okay? So this is how I'm going to start with. Oh, and I wanted to say that when I looked at this palette, I felt it was a little bit too boring. And um, Casey showed us how to put it on a color wheel, but I didn't really understand how to use that. I understood how to map it out as far as intensity, hue, and, and uh, chroma, or um, tone. Wait, intensity, hue, anyway, anyway, I'm not doing this well. I don't really do well with labels. But I didn't really understand that once you put your, lay your colors out in the wheel, depending on how, how intense the, the color is versus how mute it is, which maybe is not the right word opposite. Anyway, I didn't understand what you do with it once you see the mapping. But I looked at this color th thing and I felt as though it needed something to be a different color that would strike interest and variety because let's face it, the thing with consistency is it gives us that feeling, satisfied feeling of knowing what's ahead of us and knowing, feeling secure, feeling safe. It's the inconsistency that we gives us that surprise and mental interest and stuff. So I decided I'm going to add a big bright pink in there. It may not be the right color, but I decided that for right now it's what I want to start with. So right now already I feel like that became my central, my focal point. And you'll note that that's not necessarily a color that you're going to see in lavender. Maybe you would see it in part of the flower or something, but it's not really so much. So I'm hoping that maybe I can do something. I don't know if I'll put it in the shadows or actually in the lavender. I'm going to see. This will probably be the last color when I feel like I've done all the can with the other colors. All right? So I'm going to put that outside of the box here. And, um, and maybe leave that tilted. It's kind of convenient. All right, so let's get started drawing. looking at the halfway here, see I put it too far to the edge, but maybe not. It'll still come in. I like it not here. Okay, so maybe put that as the transition, but anyway, the point is it's going to come up tall here, and then it's going to come down and make some interesting shapes. And mainly I'm trying to move it down. I kind of like this group of, of here because it's going to stop your eye from going out of the composition and maybe push you back into it. So I'm going to go up here and do this. Now, I don't know that I want to commit to the darkest darks just yet, but I do want to get an idea of laying in some shape. See, there's the light that comes down in that hill. All right, so here I'm going to have a little, this is a nice little separation here of the dark. It's not just a plain background, so let's put that triangle there. Also, that triangle leads you into the composition, doesn't it? Okay. And I have a grouping with trees. I may be getting too specific on this sort of thing because it's new to me. Okay. And it could be I could make all of this as one solid tone, a dark grass, because that's what the painters do when they talk about uh, organizing their stuff lights and darks together but I also know that it's difficult to get a dark and pastel for me anyway but it's also difficult to get a really light light and even though this is the lightest light and lighter than the paper I still don't want to get these muddy and dark so I know I'm being probably a little more conservative than I should be but I'm gonna do it anyway because you're gonna watch my mistakes and then you can learn from them or not and maybe they won't be mistakes and then boom boom all right, there's no actual, this line does not meet up with this. Maybe it meets up with the top of this triangle here. I don't know that that's important, but um, since I'm using this for an inspiration and I am a realist painter, um, it tends to be something that I look at. But again, I'm, I'm really trying to break out of that a little bit. Um, I feel, um, I don't like it when people say, oh, your, your work looks like a paint or a picture. 
and I mean a photograph, and I don't find that to be a compliment, which I don't mean to say that to anybody who's ever said that to me. I don't mean that to be, I was offended by it. I, I wasn't. I understand where you're coming from. And I also understood that the intent was it was that it was a compliment. But I think for where my brain was at the time, this poll here uh, doesn't interest me and it's not important and it adds nothing to the picture. So I'm not interested in that whatsoever. However, this. And I think also in this case, because these pieces are so, so thin, if I add the pastel here and then I spray fix it to give me another layer of tooth again, but also maybe to keep the green um, separated, I think I can come in with very light positive strokes and put in these highlights of this. So I probably should take the paper off of this stuff and use it sideways, actually. That would be a smart way to do this, wouldn't it? And I'm noticing that this green is a cold green. Um, it, it's funny because it looks a lot warmer on the paper, and all I can say here is it's got to be the difference between how it looks with white and how it looks on the yellow, on the cream colored paper, I don't know. Anyway, I work so slowly, it's crazy. I should be a little more bold with this, but, um, goodness. I'll have to take this out of the video later. No point in watching a turtle run a race, is there? Good to be the turtle running the race. Perseverance is the good good quality for an artist to have, frankly. If you want to do this as you're living, you've got to have some kind of hard-headed thing. Um, you know, I watch a lot of, uh, not a lot actually, uh, I watch videos like every once in a while to try to get better with my art and learn something and that sort of thing. And they always talk about, even in my own training, using grouping the tones together. And also I find in colors, they tend to do the warm colors all here and then the cools down here kind of thing. Um, I don't, I think I'm starting this project knowing that I'm not really good enough yet at this to fully understand a lot about it. So here we go, there's my admission. My, my dad says I shouldn't talk about the things I don't do well because it's not going to help me sell my art. And that could very well be the truth. But... I think it's natural to have some fears because it pushes you forward. And if it doesn't push you forward, you've got to figure out that because that's a bit of an illness. Now, coming from my street painting days, I didn't like to smooth everything into the paper until I layered all the different colors in. And I want this to be dark down here again. I may have to put in um, some other stuff. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see on the paper here, but I have, I've glued this um, UART, I think it's UART paper, it's a sanded pa paper made for pastels, and I put a pencil mark here where the mat for this um, frame exists, because I, I wanted this to be the backboard, stick it into a mat and a frame, already ready to go. Oh, I have a note here that says this is a 600 grit sandpaper, so I obviously wanted to mount, I think I had four, six, maybe 800. And I wanted to see, because I don't do pastel that often, enough to know what I really like yet. Um, okay, so now I want to leave this for the lights. And I tend to like to work high contrast and then back off. So right now I think I'm going to put in some whites here to remember this going around like this. Okay, and then it gets thinner down here. And this comes a little further down here, although really that starts to get into... The yellows, so we can put the yellows in there. Although maybe it would be nice to have the white underneath. Okay. At some point, I think the the cream color is going to serve me well. All right. So let me put in a wee bit of purple. Let's put in the darker purple here. Maybe it already looks like lavender if you know what I'm going for, huh? And then as I get into the lighter stuff, I'll pick a lighter purple. And blend in a little bit here because of course the light is coming around at the thing and it's getting in there. So I don't want to be too consistent because you can see maybe here you've got a grouping here, one sticking out longer, then a little bit of an open space. This is 
you know, the grouping here, the little bit of open space, then a tall one again. So you can, and then here you get a whole bunch together, and a lot of that's also a point of view. But my point is that you don't want everything the same, but also it doesn't exist in nature and the same. So one of the things that you really can see when you do anything, pretty much, is that um, we do, our brains do want order. Yeah. And even a brain that doesn't seem like it wants order, it still seeks an order of its own kind of tie, style. You'll also see that I'm trying to apply this in strokes, and that's very different from how I did it here. I can see the way that this flat surface left the marks here, that there's some of this stuff going on. And it's a lot like how when I did the street painting stuff, it was a lot of that similar kind of thing. I want this to come down in here now. So I'm going to start refining my shapes a little bit, even though I'm doing very choppy kind of things. I don't know if I want the same greens for all this stuff. Here's a cooler green because I'm going into the distance, do you see? Maybe it's too dark in places, but again, it's okay because yeah, it's, it is what it is. Let's put some of this in this corner here. And I like it because this um, yellow, because again, that needs to be coming out as the subject. And let's say here I want a little bit of something here. Um, I think the guy's name that I've been watching recently is Ian Roberts. I really, really, really love his videos on YouTube. And if you get a chance, I do recommend you go. He lays things out in a gorgeous way. But also, one of the things that I actually wrote down in a notebook because I felt was profound was the th idea about group your shapes, make your shapes what they are, and then work in the transitions. But remember that when you're working, putting your details into the shapes, you don't want to destroy the form. So if I come in here, and there's my group of lavender right there, and then I add some little detail of maybe a ladybug or something like that, but it breaks the overall form of the piece, it's not a healthy thing for your art to do. Um, so I, I need to get that quote and probably put it on here when I put this video together because seriously this yellow is too too strong but it's an interesting accent in the back isn't it now maybe maybe put some up in here to pull the eye up closer here not too much um, but anyway it was an interesting point because it what I felt like I walked away from that one that I wanted to try myself that I feel like I'm already kind of not doing it because I'm already getting lost in detail. I'm afraid to lose things, which is always my problem. Um, let's see if I can pick a different green that's lighter. I really like the warmth of this green. Um, I like it because it it's so difficult when you're doing landscape plan a, plain air uh, because there are so many details. You see every little leaf, every foliage, every everything. But if you can do these figure studies that I've started to do on my spare time, which actually I don't know what that means. Um, sometimes at night or something I try to, to do some. I have a notebook my friend Dragona gave me and I've been trying to get myself into doing these daily drawings because I know they work and I see the professional artists, the ones who really do well are the ones who practice and sadly to be honest I've been spending so much time trying to do marketing on, on selling my stuff. Look at what I did. Why did I put a, a thing there? So that might be something he's talking about that when the stuff destroys your form. However, if you look here, this lavender is only this tall. It's not a plant that's that tall. There's a different level in this terraced hill here, okay? And so I didn't really break up the form. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, okay, maybe we'll splash some of this green up in here. And maybe put a little bit in here. Okay. I don't know that this is really going to impress anybody for <laughs> any while. Now, this, these group of weeds over here, I'm going to use this cool kind of teal color. And I don't really think it works right now, to be honest. It's a color that I think is a lovely accent, but I know a man has a house that color, and I asked him why he did that, because it grosses me out. It's a hospital color. I don't find it appealing whatsoever. And he said, oh, I did it so that I can, when people ask me where I live, I can tell them, and they instantly know which house is mine. And I thought, hmm, 
So when I did a mural that included his house in it on the view of the mountains, I changed the color to be a little bit more blue to more of my liking, but it still stood out from the rest of the hill. So if he ever sees the mural, because I don't know that he'll ever come over. But anyway, uh, you never know. Um, he can still have the quality that you know which house is his. But anyway, that's a, that's a digression. But my, my point is that I don't necessarily like the color, but I'm trying to push out of something. And because of that, I want to use something I'm not particularly sure is going to work. Because, again, experimenting is really a fun thing. Okay, I see bits of white in these little plants down here, but I think I need to have a little bit more worked out in, in the detail of this before I go on to it. So you can see I've got a shape here of a lighter green, got the, the bulk of the dark green. I've got another dark green around here as a halo, which doesn't really seem to work too well. But um, I'm going to go with it for a moment because I can always smush and, and add later some stuff in here. Okay, maybe I can put a black for the implication of a tree here. I don't know that that's important, but some part of me thinks it could be an arrow into the composition, you know. If it's wider here, doesn't it look like an arrow, sort of? And maybe that's too literal. Maybe I need to break it up as I did in the original. But oh. In the end. All right. So I, I kind of like what I have going on here. Now, I like this cold green here because I can see that in this bush here, which may be a, an olive, um, it's a colder, colder green. But I need to have it dark cool green and not that big, not this color here. So I'm thinking maybe if I add a little bit of blue. There are so many greens in the world. It's intimidating when you think about it. I mean, there are a lot of other, uh, a lot of other colors also, but I mean, it kind of shocks me a bit. I love these unison pastels. Um, and no, I don't make any money from saying that kind of thing. That seems to be the thing to, to say as a disclaimer that I'm not making any money, which is true, um, from them anyway. Uh -huh. So, I'll come in. Now, what I want to do at this point is stand back and take a still life shot with this camera. So I'm going to close this video and go take a still life shot. Do you see where Gregory the Pisa is? Da Pisa? Gregory da Pisa. Yes, that's my assistant who's standing right where my feet need to be as I work on this pastel. Hi, this is Kelly Borsheim and we're going to do some more pastel drawing. I'm going to develop the painting that I started yesterday. Um, I'm here so you know it's me, but I'm going to put the camera behind me like that and um, so you can, I'm going to move it in closer so you can see what I'm actually doing up here a little better, okay? Thank you for watching. Keep on watching, subscribe, like, and share, comment, all that good stuff. Okay, let's get painting. Gregory, spero che non ti distruggio. Okay. You know, what's funny is that even though this is extremely rough and does not have what I would consider a finished look to it, I really got to where I like this. I, I left this overnight to charge up the battery on my camera, and I really found the, the holes, the looseness of it. When you stand back, it still leaves a pretty good impression. So I took a photo of this in case I really still like it. However, also during the night, I decided that um, I want to put more complex greens inside these darks in area. They need to be close in tone so that it stays one big dark shape, but not so close that it, it's boring and it's not worth the effort to do. So I decided to take, I want to go in the more blue-green directions to keep all of this cold, and that way I keep this being the subject area, and the, the lighter yellows and warmer colors up here and the cooler ones down here. Maybe. I may balance a little bit of yellow thrown into there or something. I have to yet to think that about that. So I chose some blue-greens. I went through all of the pastels that I have, and I chose some darker blues 
And I'll show you a picture in the um, close-up or in the in a still life when I put this video together. And I chose some dark. Um, this is a darker blue-green kind of thing. So let's see what sort of mark it's going to make. See, it, it's a similar tone, but it's a very bright. It's a luscious, luscious color. That's one of the joys of pastels. But I'm going to play with this now if I can get the dog to move out from under where I need to stand because I adore him, but I don't want to be stepping on any body parts. All right, so I'm just going to sort of fill in some of these holes that I left before, even though during the night that's still kind of... Now, because I'm in the shadow area and it's not so much the highlight, I, I want to keep doing this streaky, this kind of grassy t mark making that I've been doing, but I, need, I can be a little bit looser on it because in the end I'm going to blend a little bit this so that you don't see so many of the strokes. Push some up here as a transition into this accent color. I don't know how many colors I need because sometimes it's nice to have a very simple palette, but because I'm trying to move away from my monochromatic tendencies, if one can have one of those, or some of those, then I kind of don't want to do too much of that. And here, maybe I'll just finish it up this section here. Maybe the blue will help push this in the distance back, although the tree coming in front of these two lines makes that sort of happen as well. Okay. I don't want to get carried away with it, because then too balanced is too balanced. So I like this now. I've got kind of in this horizontal area, I've got a belt of this blue stuff, and then I've got just a little bit on one corner. and. Um, because asymmetrical pleases me more than, than not most of the time. All right, so I'm going to use this color now. It's one of the unison. Um, it's not in the dark patch. It might, no, it, actually it might be the same color that's in my dark. I just didn't see it this morning. Um, so I pulled this out of a different, probably, I, I probably bought a green. I think I bought greens or landscape colors or something at one point. And this, I'm just sort of breaking up a little bit of this line here. And again, I'm trying not to be too hard. Look at how even that I got with that. So I put a little bit of diagonal in here and change the shape a little bit. And maybe I'll push those back with the other greens. All right. So let me go ahead and see this is a little bit darker green than the one I used yesterday, which is what I want. I want a little bit of change of tone, but not too much diversity to give you subtle joys in the shadows. Okay, stand back and look. And I can see I've left a lot of holes yet, but I'm not as worried about it because I know that once the I do the next step, I can, and plus I can always add more. So there is that. There, And I say you can always add more, but sometimes the paper gets so full of the powder pigment of pastel that you really can't add too much more unless you put a fixative or um, another kind of thing to give it more tooth um, there. I don't know if you can erase. I've not had a whole lot of luck with erasing so much, but um, I think Casey mentioned a pan pastel. No, it's not a pan pastel. It's another product that's like a fixative, I think. Um, because it, it exists in the United States, I didn't find a way to get it here yet, But because um, I'm in Italy. And it may be that that's not a problem to get. Let me step back and take a look at this. And I like how it's progressing. It, it's coming along a little bit more. I want to put in a little bit more dark in here. And yet, I don't want to make it too ridiculous. So maybe I'm going to choose a different color. Maybe I'll let it be seen that there are other lavenders here, but distant. Let's put in a little spark of that blue there. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure that I like that either. So let's go back in with some of this green here. This is a lighter green. It's pretty high intensity, pure. Let's see, but it's a little bit different from the lighter green I used yesterday. Okay. And here, maybe I want to break up some of this with some of these lines that I've seen. Although, really, I think I should probably do that after I do the blending stuff, stuff and see how that goes. Here, I can take... This is the green I used before, or is it a bluer one? It might be a bluer one. Let's use, I'll probably use this one. Let's use a little bit of this olive, more olive back in the shadowy area of this. Let's see how that's going. Let's 
Eh, maybe that's too trying too hard. All right. So I think at this point, let's see. Do I have another brighter? I want to do something with turquoise, but I'm not sure what yet. So what I'm going to do is take my fingers because I love finger painting, don't you? And I'm going to start. I'm not going to blend in this area of the lights just yet because I want to see what is, what's going to happen when I start muting in the background. Gregory, I love you, but it's hard to draw when you're standing right under me. Um, okay, so when I paint with my fingers, as even on the streets of Florence when I did the street painting stuff, I always want to use a different finger for the different tones because it's easy to mix stuff up and then you get what you don't want. So I, I like to start with my pinky. Um, and I'm just going to gradually... Now what I don't want to do is be so heavy-handed with this that I take out all of the stroke marks that I put in. It's not... I want it to blend. I want these colors to blend, but I want to be able to see the difference between the blue and the light green and the dark green and the, the blue-green versus the blue and, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm just very lightly... I'm really trying to get rid of the sharp edges and also the blank of the paper because it's interesting but it's not where I wanted it to be necessarily. But you can see already that once I start doing this it comes more like the photo and that is a bit of my problem. Um, but we'll see how it goes because I could have left it the way it was but I didn't feel like it had a finished look to it. And again part of that is the problem that because I have been trained in the classical art stuff it, I find, personally, it's been difficult for me to move away from it too much, but I'm trying to remind myself that, you know, 100, 500 years ago, whatever, these artists made paintings that looked like people, individual people even, but they never looked like photographs. And that's kind of something I would really like to, to emulate, um, because I think that's an interesting way of looking at things. It, it becomes art then. Um, and as I said before, the hyper-realism kind of bores me to tears. And I hate to say that because obviously somebody's put in a heck of a lot of work to make that sort of thing, but I just find emotionally it just doesn't touch me at all. Other than to be wow and awe of a technique. But it's a technique that I'm in awe that a person had the patience to do that, but another part of me thinks I don't feel anything, therefore I don't want to develop that, pers that particular technique to that level. However, I can tell that if you really don't look at a whole lot of art and you say, oh, it looks like a photograph, well, okay, but there's levels of that. And I, I imagine if you looked at a hyper-realistic um, painting versus a, uh, a regular painting, uh, even a realism painting, like what a lot of us from the schools in Florence do, versus um, a painting from 500 years ago that's in the realistic tra tradition. I think you would start really seeing more of the difference of what I'm trying to express here. I don't, I don't think it's so unusual that I'm saying these things. All right, do I have a clean finger? Maybe not. Also, you want your fingers to be dry, so if you go wash your fingers thinking you've got too much, just use a different hand. Well, here you can see, I, I like to touch things, so I tend to get color all over me. Um, I don't have enough material here to be mushing. So, yeah, use the other hand if you want, or if you want to go wash your hand, go wash your hand, but make sure that before you start touching in this flat past the pigments in the paper again, that your hands are actually dry, because a lot of times your hands aren't really dry when you wipe them on the towel. They're mostly dry, but there's still a little bit of uh, water left in there. That's not a bad thing, it's just a thing to notice that, you know, before you get into this again. Okay. Oh, Gregory, straddling the dog. Okay. The thing is, because I know this is the first layer and these are okay, I'm trying to do the nice smoothing that I think I want because Frankly, for me, I find I get more depth in pictures when I have softer edges. Uh, I would rather, if you have to err on one side or the other for my personal taste, I would say I'd rather have a photo that, or a, an artwork that has all of the edges soft than all of the edges hard. Because I would, I, I tend to feel more with the softer edges. It just seems more romantic, more distant, more mysterious. 
and the mystery of, is what intrigues me. Okay. Well, this may be out of the bounds of the line, but on my papers when. I I'm going one direction. I'm going from here and pulling across here, lifting, pulling across, lifting. One direction, just like I do carving marble. Because I'm pulling the, the dark, I'm pulling the dark green into the lavender spots. And you can see when I added the white, it's because I picked up a little bit on that finger there. Alright. I don't have enough material there. And you have to be careful because when you rub a lot like this onto a sandpaper, you're finally got, you're scraping off your fingers um, prints. So try not to do that before you have to go to the police and get fingerprinted because it's kind of annoying when they can't read your fingerprints and make you have to do it again. As I have had to do. It still didn't work, but I mean, I, I usually destroy mine sanding stone carvings, but it can work just the same on this sandpaper. This particular one, as I mentioned before, is a is a 600 grit sandpaper made for pastels that I mounted onto this foam core. And uh, okay, so now I have everything except you see some of the paper coming through. But I'm going to deal with that toward the last thing. Now I want to stand back and evaluate. And the first thing that I see that bothers me because that's what I usually do is worst first fix the worst first. This high contrast area here is a, is a smaller point, therefore it's really distracting from the subject. If you look at this, uh, look away from this and then look at it again, I think this is taking up far more attention than it needs to. So the first thing I want to do is make these ye bright yellow shapes a little bit smaller so they're not as important. And of course I'm using the um, uh, the, the photograph as an image for what I want to do. So let me say I want it to go let me put in a little bit more turquoise into this. This turquoise is such a luscious color, this teal. I said turquoise later, but I think turquoise is considered a much lighter uh, tone. It's probably, turquoise is more like this. This is a teal, right? I'm not really good with labels so much. Sometimes it's to my detriment because what it does is you see how you, it's still there and maybe I can cut down the intensity of it, not make it quite such a, an intense yellow. Um, so maybe I can add in some of this lighter stuff here. But it's way better being a small accent like this, isn't it? Even if I put in a little bit of mushy there soften it again because I don't want to take up too much of the thing here so I'll soften this baby move in some of these colors mix them in I do like grasses I want I like the lines are there because it's the way the trees and this stuff are blocking the light from getting this so the sun is going in certain things but you see now it's now it's a background object do you see that that's an important thing to do because especially that being so far off the edge of the painting it doesn't make any sense to have my eye go there now, and this seems too narrow to me, so I want to soften this by putting in a little bit more here. And like it does in my original, just put in a little circular shape kind of thing. And so it's kind of funny because what I'm doing a little bit is going back to my classical training in the sense that you work backwards and come forward. Um, the idea being that you can't really set the tone of your subject matter, the, the main star of the show, 
until you have got all the other players figured out their relationships. It, it's not always that cut and dry because naturally changing one changes the others and um, everything's relative. I do like this black here. You know, technically speaking, the black should get lighter because it goes in the distance. And, I, and I, the tree ends at this top level here, but I pulled it down a little bit reminiscent perhaps of that pole there, but mostly because I felt like the, the black needed to go a little further into the composition to lead the eye down into that. Um, maybe that's right or wrong, I don't know. We'll see. And, all right, so now I step back again and I think, yeah, okay, I like that. I'm, I'm going to pull that lavender up over the bottom of the tree so you don't necessarily need to see the tree. So the thing I can add a little bit more in, I'm going to take a yellow green this time. It's a little bit darker, not too much. And I'm going to pull this light so that it doesn't just stop the tree. You know, the tree doesn't just block everything. Okay, and pull this over. And again, I am looking at my reference to just get an idea of things. But mainly, um, I don't want too much of the same color. So let me see if I can find a kind of a blue-green. It's light. Just give a little bit more interest into this shape here. It shows that it's a different plant because the color is different. But also the shape will be different. Okay. I want to soften it, but I want to keep this little indication of little strokes and, and things like that. Because, um, again, it's not it's not the star of the show. But, uh -oh. Time for me to go buy vegetables from the, the brothers that come every Tuesday. Alright. Okay. That's all right. And then here, it's a little bit too. Right now here, maybe I want to develop this little light. Okay. All right. And again, I'm looking at this background. Right now, I'm trying to not pay attention to this. I'm thinking, I don't like this going on here. It's, um, they are lines that go into the composition, so I don't really know why I necessarily like them. They're not parallel, which is good, but I don't, they're more like the sun rays. You see, if I kept this line going on, this line going on, they would go in different directions, and that's nice. But somehow I feel like it's just too obvious going in here. So what I want to do is make, make this more, going back again to my original model, and make this bush come around here. These are highlights that are catching the edges of this shape as they bounce into the sun, or actually it might be a different plant. So sticking to that, it, the way that the sun is coming from this side here, it may not make sense this long thing going in this direction. It makes more sense for it to come in this direction here, just like this does. So I'm going to knock this down a little bit. Okay. I don't mind leaving some of that in there, but I do want to change the direction and make this a little bit spottier. Also, I want this to come down a little bit more. Maybe it's a repeating form of shapes, but it's um, sometimes that you know that's not necessarily a bad thing all the time. Okay. What I want to avoid is not really copying the entire photo because um, it is an inspiration, but I don't. I also have to realize that. A lot of these dark shapes, if I were looking at this with my eye, I would see all of that information. Okay. And again with this, let's put this back in darker here to put in another level. Because I do like the idea of putting in the, the idea that there are terraces, even if you don't consciously think of them being terraces, some part of your brain might kind of put that together. Okay, another thing, the shapes here. I don't like that this shape is almost the same as this, and um, I want to break it up a little bit. So this can come over a little bit more here and come back down. I do like this yellow dumping down into this. And this can actually go a little bit rounder into this teal area, or turquoise area. Okay, so I'll pull some of that in there. 
So I feel like the shape is more varied now, and that makes it interesting. I don't need to soften as much there. And then this needs to get broken up a little bit more. Okay, let's take a look at this. I think the background is interesting now. I'm not sure if this is still taking up too much detail, but it's always a balance because you don't want everything to be muted and then have your one subject area boom, 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 boom. You want something to make you look at it more than two seconds. So it could be that this travels around here, but this gives an idea there's a field level there. Maybe there's one there. Um, and again, this will be here. Let's pull some of this green up here, make it lighter, and kind of connect this with another thing. And but I don't need to get too much into that. Now what I want to take a look at is, oh, that's a bit loud, isn't it? I need a dark background so that that really pops up when I put the lavender going up into the light. So let's pull some of this back into the darks. Okay, clean off the fingers. Now, one of the things that I enjoy about this shape here is that it's a triangle, and this is more of a curvy fan, okay? Um, granted, I made it more square-like there, but whatever. All right, so if I like that triangle, and inside here I like these little bit of the grasses that are going here, and they're also at a diagonal, and I find that puts a little more energy into this. So I want to add something dark to, well, first let me develop the triangle more. So let's pull this, and I'm going to try, now that I've got a smooth background, I'm going to try to keep my strokes a little bit more uh, sharp, not blended necessarily. And you see the idea with some of this. I can get an idea of the texture of these grasses with how I apply this this form here. I don't want to obliviate the total, the darkness here, but it's also not a solid darkness, so it could be that I can leave that there. And I like this kind of coming through here a little bit. Now I feel like this is getting too light, and you know, I don't, I want to have some interest but not take over the subject. So I'm going to use this darker blue that I found in my collection. It's actually a collection of pastels I bought when I was in. Um, Australia in 2014. And that was a really fun, fun, fun adventure. I got to judge an art competition of about nine different categories like ceramics, fiber arts, paintings, photography, all, you know, all the, all the good stuff like that. And I also did a couple street paintings to promote the event and I taught workshops after that in classical realism and I went to the, the local schools and worked with the art teachers there and the kids to do um, a mural project and some other things like that, painting still lifes. And, and so that was really a, a great trip and, and worthwhile in a lot of ways. Okay. I don't know if I've lost some of this idea here. It is difficult for me to talk while I draw, and so I should shut up and just let you see what I what I do, huh? But anyway, it could be that if I'm not careful, this may take over this. So I'm, I'll stand back and look at it. But I actually like this being a, a turquoisey color instead of this white here because it's more fun and, and that's one of the reasons that I want to use pastel is to get into color a little bit more. So I want to throw in a little bit more of a darker purple, which I don't really have one. Uh, this is the darkest purple my pastels come in, but you can see it's quite a bright, bright color. Let's see if I put it in here. It might, it might be alright as a blend into a background kind of thing. I don't want it to hit you in the face purple, because this, again, is my purple I want you to see. Um, and I'll, I'll put that in later, using that. But I do have in my unison darks, I have a darker blue. 
It's not really a purple, but it's more towards purple than it is towards green. So, let's see what I want to do here. Maybe push in some darks. To give this an idea of this being a single bush here. Maybe this is another bush. I'm going to keep that a little bit not super, super soft. Because again, even, even though I said I really like everything with soft edges, sometimes what I do when I'm trying to decide which way to err on, wide hips, narrow hips, wide shoulders, narrow shoulders, big nose, little nose, that kind of thing, I ask myself, I make that into a yes or no question or an either or question, you, you know, the, the world is not black and white. However, a lot of times if you think about what black and white decisions would be and which side of the fence you would fall on if you had to make a choice sometimes it really does help you decide which way to which direction to err on if you I mean I always assume I'm gonna err so that's just my way of talking to myself I think that it could be that I want to show something different um, I want I, I don't know what I want, but if you give me where I have to make a choice between something, it helps me decide because I think, for some reason, I seem to be full of indecision. And I think, honestly, I think a lot of that comes from that I can see both sides or many different sides, actually, to a lot of situations. And it, it frustrates me in some ways. It enlightens me in most of the time, which is why I don't really find it as, as such a defect as maybe other people find it annoying that I do that. I do find that it gives me compassion, but it also gives me questions. And for me, life is more interesting when there are questions involved. And I don't always feel like, in fact, I don't often feel like I have to have the answer for that. And that also brings me peace. Um, but, I, but, you know, one of the side effects for that same quality is that it sometimes means that I have a hard time making a decision. I'm not sure if I like that little distraction. I may have to live with that for a little bit. But now I want to go in and put a few accents here. Do you see how difficult it is to be seriously random? I don't mean serious as I'm not. I, see, I kind of think this is what Ian was talking about. It breaks up the form of that bush. And that's not necessarily... Yeah, see, I don't know that that adds anything particular. I'm enjoying this section here, but I also wonder if it's not just a little bit dull. So pull these babies out. You see how easy, easy it is to fix a... I don't want to call it a mistake. Maybe a mistake is too harsh for you, but um, I can tone these things down anyway. I don't want that straight line so much, maybe. Okay. So to develop this triangle a little bit more, maybe I need to come in and add a wee bit of different kind of green to give some kind of thing. At this point, I'm trying to enjoy the process, look at the lusciousness of the colors coming through, and every once in a while step back and say, am I going in a direction that pleases me, that makes me think, wow, how fun is this? Um, because I am really, but I tend to really love this purples and this um, teal color together, and I'm enjoying all that. I'm just a little bit worried that's being too attention-grabbing from this, but it could be that I need to come and develop this, because once I develop this a little bit more, get some more of this impressionist, because right now I don't think that you see it as lavender. In fact, if it's an abstract piece of art, you don't need to see it as lavender. However, it may be very lovely to have you see it as a plant um, or something. You know what I mean? A little bit of... But I don't know. I think sometimes it would be cool to make the marks. 
Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding green to this high yellow because I find the two-tone thing is more interesting. And also, as leaves have light, it, they, usually they, the leaves have a little bit of a bend in them, so they have part of the light catching, a, the, part of the leaf catching some of the light. And, and also it changes, so I don't want a straight yellow line. If I can kind of let the green wash over some of this a bit, um, might be all right, no? All right, so we've got that color. I want to put in a bluish green. This is probably, oh no, that's that teal thing, or that turquoise. All right, I'm going to stop the video and take a look at this and study it and do thinking more than talking. Okay, I'm back now, and my first feeling was I want to move this yellow more into here and make the light hit more because it's coming from this angle, and I want to correct this vision here and let this, as it goes around down this way, to have some of the light get less and less. It's still there, and you can see even here in the example, the, light, the grasses kicking out here are receiving a little bit of light here and there, but I want to refine the shape a little bit because what I like about this backlighting is that the shadow this is a triangle shape right here okay um, I see the world in triangles and so I tend to like that but what I'm missing is I'm missing the point of the triangle that's up here at the top okay and this is another triangle here but I don't feel that it's it is a triangle here but not as much and so I want to kind of pull this down a little bit too and make it two triangles of slightly different shapes up in here contracted by this curve of the shape of the bush okay especially here but but I'm not sure I really like that being so straight across so um, you know there's that and then this coming up maybe I need to make that more square so I, I don't I don't know I want to make sure I'm playing with the shapes uh, I like this balance of the plant down here but I do feel like I want a gradation of tone. Do you see how right in here, this is dark because these are actual bushes and the shadow is darkest on this dark side of that. However, this seems to be a little bit lighter up in here and it's probably because it's another level of terrace and then these grasses go up in front of it. But there's, you see there's a little bit of light in here and then it gets dark again here, okay? That, it's not important for your brain to understand it. I'm studying it because I want to figure out if there's a why and a reason behind what I'm doing or if I want to make a purely abstract thing, which is not really a purely abstract thing. It's just that if you didn't know I was doing a photo, would you look at this and go, wow, that's random? Um, you know, if it didn't look like a tree here, you might think that this was just weird blotches and stuff. But at the end, I think this probably makes it plant-like. That makes it plant-like. Um, in the end, I don't really care about the labels so much. I am looking at the shapes, the playing of colors and the textures, and, um, and I want to make an image that I feel like has a good balance, even if I don't necessarily know what it's going to be at this point. I also felt like the tree here is too obvious, and I kind of want to let it go off into the Netherlands, so I think I'm going to take this lovely dark blue. It's a little square piece that I have. And I put it down in here, and I really like it. It contrasts beautifully with the teal blue, but it's also my favorite color, this one. But I think I'm going to put it right at the base of this tree to sort of pull some of this back. And I'm using the side of this because I'm trying not to be so precise. I want to loosen up a little bit and, and uh, push this onto some of the side of that. So I may leave that. It's kind of cool. It's like an animal shape. It looks To me, it almost looks like the head of an animal, the body of an animal, and four little running legs. So I think I'm going to leave that as a happy little accident, as Bob Ross famously quoted, or made famous. I don't know if he said it or not, but uh, originally. But anyway, uh, you know, there's a lot of artists that steal. <laughs> I don't know if he's one of them. I, I can't say that. I'm just saying that I've had so many teachers make quotes that they act like it's theirs, and then you realize some famous dead guy said it centuries ago. I just didn't know any better. Anyway, enough to do with that silliness, I suppose. Alright, so another thing is I like black 
Um, some people think black is a terrible thing to do because it's just too much, but I feel like why would I not want to use all of the contrast range I have if I want to make a high tone painting, which generally for my voice, I tend to like high contrast more than the soft, gentle, pastel Monet kind of things. The, I mean, those are lovely and stunning, seriously, but it's a whole different emotional effect than something that's um, a high key, a high, uh, high contrast painting using all the tones. So to that end, I wanted to make some of this. One of the things I liked about these is that they sort of emerge out of the darkness. So I've got too much light green in the back of here to make that emerging sensation. So I'm going to pull in some of this black, not trying to cover up the blues and purples. And also, because it's a conflicting sort of Thing. It's the choppiness that's going to give you this idea of these little grasses and the nat natural things behind it. So, it's again, it's just really difficult to be seriously um, random because the body, brain doesn't like random. Brain likes order. Anything with out of order gets our attention because that keeps us from the wild beast, they say. You know. The dinosaur is going to make a move or make a sound or something and you're going to hear it all in the chattering of the regular birds because the birds are normal, not different. But maybe I could make some other cool little animal shapes in here, huh? You want a rabbit? You want to pull a rabbit out of my hat? Oh wait, that's a dirty joke, sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's how the brain works. I shouldn't apologize for myself. You know, it is what it is. Okay, and that may be getting a little bit too weird, but um, I don't know, pull in a little here. But I don't, I, I do want the, I, I like I liked the background before. I don't really want to get too much into changing it. Just break up some of this stuff here, but leave the overall shape as a dark green, I think would be fine. Yeah, I'm liking how that comes along. Um, I kind of want to pull in this light here a little bit more. A little bit more up in here. And pull this down a little bit to make that triangle shape that I was telling you about. Eh, it could be that's getting a little sloppy, but um, I'm not sure. And these I feel like made into mud. So it could be that if I want these soft grasses up in there, I can come in again with the dark and, and make that go in. Alright, so let's play with some lavender. I don't mind if it pulls in some of those other colors and sticks, you know, on the top of the thing and then you paint another stroke. If I did, I can always wipe that off here and not and worry about it too much. Okay. Although the sun doesn't seem to be hitting this spot, so maybe white doesn't make sense there. It needs to be kind of put off into this. Okay, now, as I go into... The lighter area, I want to move to a lighter purple, okay? And pull some of this paper back. Whoops, oh, there we go. It's more fun anyway, isn't it? Because you can really get dirty. How cool is that? And remember, I wanted to push up this fan a little bit, this fan shape here. And... Still kind of keeping in some of this stuff. And here it's going to be less intense. That's a, something that I, we haven't talked about too much in this. But the intensity is because, you know, in classical art, as the sun goes away, that things not only get darker, but they also, because they're getting a black added or a black and a white gray and stuff, the, basically the intensity of the color goes away because it's had these other things mixed in with it. So here I've got an even lighter shade of violet, um, lavender. I'm going to put in on just only on the right side of the plants, okay? Because again, the sun's hitting everything. I'm going to pull this yellow back down. OK. 
Okay. And then here it goes a little bit random. I'm going to have to st take a step back and look at that. Okay, so I want a little bit more of the fan feel here. And I don't want to use that dark, dark yellow that I used before. So I'm using a, a, a much, much lighter yellow. A lot of white mixed in it, so it has a low intensity to it. And I'm going to throw in some of that over here. Because as again, as I go away, I want this to be a triangular thing of light. And not necessarily totally. What I'm doing when overlapping the colors here is I'm also trying to soften this edge because an edge is basically a change in tone and it's how fast you change that tone that's how sharp the edge is. So if I go dark dark and immediately go into white light light that's a sharp edge whereas if I do a dark tone a little bit lighter a little bit lighter a little bit lighter a little bit lighter and I spread those out with distance you're gonna have a very very soft curve if I put them very close together and, and in a small space like this all of a sudden you see wow I changed tones from here to boom that's a hard edge but if I if I gradually make that a wider a slower conversion if that's what I'm trying to say alright so I want a light green now Let's see if I found a light green in my collection. No, but there's a cold green. It might be interesting. Although the light's hitting this, so I only want this warm green. Let's see what this pulls up in here. Too much paper. So I'm reducing some of this yellow. You see, I still like the yellow in there to warm up this color in this area. But I don't want it to be the main thing in here. I want to knock down some of the purple and green is considered an opposite color and it will knock down the intensity of this purple. I'm letting you see some of the purple though because I like that layered look that you get from different colors. You know the the Monet thing of putting the same tone of color next to one another but so you get a what, what, what we call broken color now. Okay, I'll mix lower a little bit of this yet. All right, so it's a little bit funny that I like to look at the piece in different light conditions, and that includes actually turning the lights off in the room and feeling what my impression is. And it's during daylight. I've got the, the shutters closed, actually, to keep the sun out of the house and keep this room a lot cooler than it would be otherwise. And um, the th when I look at this uh, picture in low light, it's probably a lot like the effect of squinting because it really does, it removes the extra detail and it gives you the basic overall composition and what I found in the dark is that and also in the light I suppose what I, I find interesting in this photo is the backlighting and the lights coming from here and it's making a diagonal kind of look and I've lost that effect here okay so I need to give that feeling that the lights coming from this direction which I really don't have right at this point so it could be popping up some of this, maybe popping up this little layer. You can see there's another layer of um, the terraced hill there and puts a little more interest in, but it also it's a stair step to the light, the light, the light. And then this, of course, is the, another stair step of light. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see, if you squint especially, there's another terrace right here. It's not getting a lot of light, but it's another level uh, to start this subliminal staircase that is not so obvious really. Um, other than that, I like the pink that I put in there because as a separation from the blue, it's uh, the, the pink is, is um, further away from the, the blue horse than the lavender is. It, it's a stronger color against the background I've got it. So I like the, red, uh, the pink there. I'm going to leave it there. Um, it could be I need to develop a little bit more lights in here and do that 
uh, okay, so I want a little. I want to basically basically break up this dark shape. Somehow having this dark shape look this dark like this is boring. Um, you know, I don't like to say that, but at the same time, if it is what if it's boring, then say it's boring, and then figure out what I've got to do to fix it. The other thing is, I want to move this this turquoise color. I like I like this here, and the fact that it's a little different, a little bit of balance there. But it needs to, as I said, go into a darker color. It needs a change of tone. Otherwise, it's quite flat and boring. And I'm not trying to make a, an illustrative dark, uh, flat piece with color and shape. I want to make um, tonal things. I can develop this a little bit more, but right now I'm thinking this is my main focus. This middle section here needs to be addressed. Right now I'm okay with the background except for maybe this part here. So this is what I'm going to work on next. I'm using the blue to pull a little bit forward here, but also I just want a different color, and um, but yet still using something on my palette. So, and I I'm doing the texture here because I want to add some of this feel of these grasses all over the place because they're a bit really wild. And maybe I'll throw in some more blue into this darkened section here. I want to still keep that sort of triangle feel of light, but it does sort of round at the corner here as far as the tone goes. It's a subtle thing, but subtle things are the things that make things fantastic, no? I like that a little bit more, but I'm a little bit curious to put in something different here. I need I need something. It, um, I'm not sure exactly what at this point. Stand back. I think this is a little more interesting. Maybe I've got, I've got a lighter green in here. I can pop in a few particulars. Again, not too dramatic on this. But I like these actually look kind of a lavenderish purple, a lighter purple. Um, they may not be a purple, they may be an actual just white in shadow, but I I don't know, maybe that's just too much of a thing, but I can come into here. This may be too light, you see how it really stands out. Uh, I think right now I just want to put it in and then stand back and evaluate the effect and more of the effect of the tone of light. Put some purple in with the turquoise because that's kind of a fun combination of things. And it may give me that the breakup that I was thinking would be interesting. Too loud. And maybe instead of doing that, I should sprinkle a darker over it to get a layer of color. I don't want to take all of it down, I just want to knock down the tone a little bit. It's a little too. And then in here, I want something interesting too, but I feel like I put some purples. What do you think of the pink? Uh, some part of me thinks it just looks too contrived. 
But what if I put enough into here and then sort of um, mute it down a little bit so it's not getting so much texture, so much high attention. Just putting in the layers and again soften the rest of it so it's not Does that give it a color depth and still have depth, or is it just looking too weird? See that, and that's that's my problem. If I'm trying to think about what my tendency is toward detail and the realism stuff, but I don't want to go there, so it's a back and forth with me. But I think I actually like that added pink in there, and. Um, I want to soften this V here a little bit, so I want to pull in a medium kind of green and let it go back a little bit into here. A little bit more, not really random, it's still a bush with that shape, but, um, and then maybe splash in some greens into the turquoise here to link them all sort of together. And what is that? It's not paper I'm hearing. What am I hearing? Something in the pastel, perhaps. You hear the scratching. I don't, it might be sandpaper on there, but it seems a little bit weird to me, no? Anyway. And this kind of being there is a nice little random center of interest. The green surrounded by the blue is, is a bit fun. And get a height. Um, makes me think I should push this down a little bit to get a... I want to get a variety up in here. But this can also start going into a darker green. I want maybe a bluer green now. Let's see what adds. Oh no, that's too... that's the turquoise blue. I want a bluer green but not so super dark as maybe this one. It's, well, see, it's a little too dark, so I have to go in, layer in the light and the dark if I don't find the exact shade that I'm wanting. Maybe this one, maybe this one. Just to break up some of this stuff, because the foliage, you know, it just, I don't know. The thing is, I'm not really a landscape painter, and I'm watching these landscape painters all the time saying, you've got to simplify, simplify, simplify. But I find sometimes I don't want the big shapes to not be broken up, and maybe that's still a mental thing saying, I know there are leaves there, the leaves aren't going to be solid. But it, it's also true that when you're oil painting, your brush stroke can have several colors in it at once, and as you pull along, even if you're just dragging or something, you can still get a really lovely, subtle mixture of colors inside an otherwise solid tone area. And that's what I'm trying to do with pastel. I do kind of like that, but now I feel like I need to have some kind of... whoops! <laughs> that's what I get for having the camera so close to where I'm working. Um, I need to have something in here to, to keep this light, directional light going on, so... Let's pull in maybe some more of this turquoise. And then knock it down again. Knock, pull it up and knock it down. Pull it up, knock it down. Okay, so let me see. Let's take some of this green and again let's make some of these into smaller little shapes. Overall green, but smaller little particles. Again, I'm trying to be random, but I know that I'm not, because it's very, very difficult for our brains to make random stuff. I think even if you... Uh, what's the mathematics on it? That I think they've shown that even if you have um, a machine doing a random thing, uh, maybe it's especially if you put it in, content, in the same room as another random machine, the two end up putting marks together, you know, like how people living together start doing similar things together, the 
stuff like that they've, they've talked about. It's um, an interesting thing that a machine would do it, though, because theoretically it would be programmed to do its thing and not adapt. But it's the stuff of science, science fiction dreams. Okay, so I've broken that up a little bit. Maybe it's too contrived. Maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll see. I do like that little bit of color thrown in here. It's kind of nice, and it's a little bit of a balance. But let's see what it looks like. It's nice, so... Yeah, I like this. I may want to photograph this and see if there's something else I could be doing. This is a little darker lavender. I felt like this was maybe standing out too much. It could be if I just mix with a little bit more. Give some sort of context to these grasses here. And let them go down into this, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it should be behind there, but... I don't want to make it even, even, even. Do you see how I just divided that into even spaces? So let's break this up a little, put a few more in here, maybe. And then do angular stuff in here to also break this shape up. And then that'll be, the, the, the mat will be covering right there, so... Is that too, is it different enough? I don't know. Maybe I need to, let's put in some height onto this. Just see, do you see the main point that I'm doing? Every artist is going to make a different decision, and thank goodness for that. But what I'm trying to do is break up not having three equal shapes. And um, I just need to be careful that in the process of doing that, I don't make three different equal shapes. <laughs> okay. And I still feel like there's something in here that's not quite matching right. So I want to pull in a little bit of blue into these darks. I, I don't always know why these decisions are there, but to be fair, I'm playing. I'm learning. And just because I'm doing it on video doesn't mean I have any kind of authority for what I'm doing. I'm playing with stuff. And understand that um, each of us has our own taste, our own voice, and sometimes we don't really even understand what it is until we see what it isn't. Um, it's always easier to see the negative thing than it is to see the positive. So, like I said to people, if you're trying to go f toward your dream, or you're trying to get rid of a habit that you don't like or something, First of all, remove out the negative things that you're doing and then see what's left and that can help you decide which direction you want to go or, you know, whatever. So I'm not sure if the blue is what was needed. Maybe the black was too strong, but... Um, I like... I think I like this better and the reason I like it better is because I, I've broken up this big dark shape and also the blues here made a transition between um, this lighter color on the grasses. And in general, I think, because even in the background, even though I've got solid colors up here, the fact that I put in a little texture right there and a little bit of these textures where the light hits the grass, I feel like you still can imagine there's a little bit of a blue and a green there, you see. So there's enough that you still get it, that it's going back because there's less detail and um, cooler colors. But also here, because in the foreground I put in a little bit more texture, a little bit more markings and stuff, I think that helped develop it, not just seem like, oh, that's an afterthought. Um, so it could be that that's just fine. And I think at this point, I'm going to photograph this outside in the sunlight. And um, then I want to see, sit on, sit on it for a day or two and see what it